here and uh, I will start this off by saying forgive uh, my speech impediment. I have a bit of a lisp recovering from some uh, cancer treatment, some uh, radiation and surgery. So a bit of a lisp. We'll get through it. Hopefully it won't be too big of a distraction. So I got this GP 200 LT. I'm a Helix user. I have a Helix floor, the full size big meal deal and um, uh, it wasn't reasonable for me to spend the money on a Stomp or Stomp XL. Um, I didn't really care for the form factor of the Stomp. I didn't like editing on the unit itself. The XL was probably a little bit better. But, you know, they are um, I, I don't think they're out of line with their with the pricing, but having already bought the full Helix a while back, it just seemed ridiculous to own two of them for, for me and to spend that kind of money. Uh, this unit came across my feed uh, the andertons video i think or some a couple of videos and i thought it sounded great and um and i do think it sounds great so i'm not going to really do a full review I, I don't think there there are quite a few of those out there i think the bottom line is if you know what you're after you can probably get there with this uh in terms of basic sounds and if the limitations in the way the dsp is implemented don't bother you namely having one slot for each type of effect, then I think it's a, a real, you know, very malleable uh, piece of kit with a couple things that are worth noting. So I'm going to go through uh, just some patches real quick so you can see how I have, I have it laid out, and then I'll go through how I laid those things out because that's something I haven't seen a whole lot of online. So this is, uh, I have patches set up, three patches, for each of my main kind of guitars. So Strat, Tele, that's kind of one world of patches, three patches, P90s, and then humbuckers. So these will be on the P90, it's a P90 guitar. So this is the clean patch, clean patch. Be some sloppy playing on this. So for me, on all of these amps, um, when you bring the patch up, the way that I have it all laid out is the, the only thing that's on by default will be reverb. Um, I think the reverbs are one of the weaker links in the unit. I think they're totally usable. I just don't think there's a whole lot of um, differentiation between, uh, and this, with the exception of the new ones, by the way, because there are a few new reverbs that I think have their own um, voice. They don't apply to most of what I play. I would just like a very good spring reverb, and I don't think the spring in here is great, but the hall is what I have. And it does a pretty good job of filling the bill. I would be fine. I, I don't think I would, you know, miss uh, anything on, on a gig, but sitting here with headphones on, it's easy to overanalyze um, some of those differences and how they'll and how they'll be heard live. So that's um that's basically the, you know, the patches that comes up. I'm going to work my way from left to right, and this will be the same basic layout on all the patches. So the first is my pre-pedal. Uh, th this is one of the areas that they gave us a little bit of um, a little bit of latitude, and this is where you can kind of double up on your gain structure. Um, and I guess with, with the amp, you can you can figure out other ways to, to build your gain structure if you need a lot of different gain settings within a specific patch for me on this clean sound i have a compressor in that slot and it's the s comp which is pretty malleable in terms of its parameters and so uh middle position second button for me is drive and on this patch i've got the od9 tube screamer so uh neck <laughs> breathe 
bridge. <laughs> Uh, third button for me, internal button, is my modulation. In this case, I've got the sine trim. And lastly uh, is delay. This is one of the stereo delays. It's the vintage rack. And then uh, I'm going to turn my compressor on here. I'm going to jump over to uh, the external foot switch. Uh, the second foot switch on that unit is my tap tempo, so... And then we'll back up uh, to the expression pedal. So you have two expression pedal inputs on this guy. Um, they can either be expression pedal or single foot switch or dual foot switch. There are several menus to get into the guts on how you want those to act and what you want them to control. For me, by default, when I bring a patch up, the expression pedal is controlling the uh, volume pedal. And I've got it set from 50 up to 100, as you can see on there. So that gives me, not so much on the clean, but on the edge of breakup and dirtier channels, it gives me a little bit more... dynamic control but obviously you can set that to 0 to 100 if you want swells and and so then I have the, the for, for me and this may change I don't use Wah too often but I figured it would be kind of cool to have it so you have an, uh, an A slash B status for the expression pedals and but you need a switch in order to make that status change happen. So I have assigned that to my external A. And for me, this will basically make the expression pedal into a wah and engage the wah. And then back to volume. So that is basically how all my patches are laid out. I'm going to go over to uh, an edge of breakup patch, which brings me to kind of the next layer of functionality as far as this thing is concerned. So obviously I'm limited in this setup to six foot switches, but I, you can combine all the, the internal foot switches uh, to do various things too. And since I use three patches per pickup configuration for my general, you know, head to a jam session kind of a thing, I've got it set up to have clean on these two uh edge of breakup on these two and a higher gain kind of a lead patch on the last two so i have you know very quick access to all of those the way i have it saved is the same on each one the reverb comes up the reverb will always be on the rest of the effects are off i do think it's worth noting that what whatever your volume uh, pedal value is when I switch my patch it stays at that that value so if I switch over from the edge of breakup back to my clean and I look at my volume I'm at 50% if I go to 100% and I go back to my edge of breakup and go back to my volume I'm at 100% so it follows you from patch to patch which I don't think is the way that the helix works but actually I kind of dig it helps me keep uh, more of a pedal board mentality so this is my edge of breakup. Uh, I'll, I'll just go through it really quickly the same way. Uh, this is the basic sound on neck. Bridge. Uh, my first slot here is a boost, and it is the boost, which is basically a model of the EP boost. Gain is 720, and the 3 dB boost is on. Bright is not on. So, uh, again, dry, patch for lack of a better word. And then uh, drive is the next. And for this patch, I'm using the force, which is the OCD model. Kind of a bright... Uh, 
lighty kind of a thing, which is cool for this patch for me. Uh, number three, again, is the sign trim. And number four is the same delay from the clean patch. So that doesn't change. Everything else is basically the same. Tap tempo on B external, A external engages, changes the, the expression pedal to be a wah. Uh, and that all operates the same as it did on the first patch. But I will say this. This is where having the volume uh, on the expression pedal gets more useful because I could probably play the majority of a set on this patch without having to do a whole lot of rolling off. If I roll off, my this has a treble bleed in it, so if I roll off my volume a bit, Pretty clean patch. A strummable patch, if you will. And that's with the volume at 50, and uh, let me bring the volume pedal up here. And then I'll... So, full, full uh, volume on the guitar. And 50% on the volume pedal. And now I'll bring that up. So, and then as you add, you know, boost and 50%, 100, or get a drive and 50%, or both of them together. So just a lot of options, uh, you know, no different than any other multi-effects unit, but given the the limitations as far as uh doubling up on effects types in this unit that was the first my really my only concern was you know it'd be cool to have an edge breakup sound where i could get all the way up to you know lead type of tone and then i'll go over to my specifically lead patch um i haven't really gone through the amps i guess but uh this one is a dr z model and um same same thing as the rest. So really quickly, boost is um, the AC boost, which I think is a really cool sounding unit. So uh, the amp by itself. Which is honestly probably as much gain as I would personally ever use. But I do have a drive pedal hooked up on here. It's again the OD9. Of course, you can combine the two. Almost getting into fuzz territory. Uh, yeah, and so and, and everything else on that patch is pretty much the same. Uh, I've got my delay modulation, if I ever wanted to use. Tremolo with a heavy distortion, which I guess could be cool. But that's essentially how I have it laid out for myself for kind of this, again, catch-all. And then I've gone through and I've built those uh, types of patches for, again, Strat kind of layout and humbucker layout guitars. So if I uh, head into a session or, or whatever else, I'm, I'm kind of ready to go and I have something that'll probably be in the territory of working and give me lots of options as far as uh, game structure is concerned. So I'm jumping over into the menus on um, the Veilton software. You have the primary settings menu and then if we go down here to foot switch uh foot switch and expression foot switch menus uh you'll see that you actually have some secondary uh menus and then we actually have tertiary menus within some of those so it can get fairly deep uh if you're just like i just want a pedal to do one thing it might not be for you but if you're used to the helix world or you know any of those um any of those kind of layouts then you'll probably be pretty comfortable uh, exploring what this has to offer. So this is where you can set up all the different functionality for the external and the internal foot switches. For me, uh, in addition to what I've already shown you from my patches, uh, by default, if you hold down the internals, you have a different set of uh, parameters you can get to. So by default, uh, the third one will bring my tuner. And I found the tuner to be pretty good. Definitely uh, kind of a serviceable thing. Didn't blow my mind. Oh, a little sharp. 
Uh, I have noticed a little bit of a glitch in the tuner sometimes, depending on uh, you know the how you're holding your right hand. Uh, sometimes the arrow won't show up on top on certain notes, or the arrow will show up, but the light, the green light, won't light up. It just you know there's always something to indicate you're in tune, but that is a bit of a, a weirdness that I that I noticed just in passing. Um, so, in addition to that, a couple of other things I have set up for me is, again, to get from my patches from my Strat, P90, and Humbucker, I'm going to use different banks for those. Now, each bank has four. I'm only using three, four patches, I should say. I'm only using three patches on each bank. If I hold my first button down, you'll see I get this list, uh, and I can basically choose my... Um, Strat edge of breakup sound from that list. It's gone down a bank, and I can do the same thing up a bank using the second Rogers P90 edge of breakup. Uh, if you want to not wait for that patch change to happen when you go from bank to bank for whatever reason, uh, right here you have an option from wait to initial. Um, if I set it to initial, it would automatically jump to the same patch in whatever bank I'm going to. So if I'm going to the bank down from here, I'm, in, I'm at 27B now. If I was to uh, be on initial and I hit the the first foot switch and held it, it would jump uh, immediately to 26B and so on and so forth. I, I'm not really sure what the advantage of that is, but it's nice they give you the option. So that is my hold feature for the first two switches and the third being the tuner. And the fourth hold brings me into the looper, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and actually the looper I think works great. Uh, there's some of the functionality in this I think works better than the Helix, which is not a great, you know, looper. But as, you know, a tertiary feature on all of these things, I think it's cool to have, so. So I've established my loop here, and I can play over it. I can overdub by hitting the same button again. But I can also, uh, while I'm in loop, I can hit these two buttons that will get me out of loop, and now I can go and use my effects as I normally would. change the patch and the loop will keep rolling. And if I'm going to get back to my looper, I'll hold down four again and I'm back in it. And like on other loopers, you can go into a few different modes. You have an undo and a redo button and then when you're ready to uh, clear it out, the second button hold will clear it out for you. So yeah, man, that to me is pretty full featured uh, for you know any any unit, but for something that costs two fifty or less, two fifty with these extra pedals, that's a pretty big win uh, for the community, in my opinion. Uh, this company seems to be giving the old college try as far as uh, updates and all that good stuff. So hopefully they'll release you know, more and more the same way that uh, Line 6 has been doing, and they they do a great job. I, I don't think that they're in any danger of being replaced by by this, and I know everybody's excited about the Tonex pedal, and it seems cool, but I, I want to have something that's a little bit more uh, full-featured, and obviously this is a bit of a larger pedal than that, but it'll still fit in my gig bag. And, uh, yeah, so just a, you know, quick overview of how i'm using it i'm sure there'll be other videos on it hope you guys are taking care of each other and we'll see you next time thanks <laughs>